The New Testament reading is from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 18. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the Word should share all good things with the instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong in the family of believers. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you so much, Orton, for reading that. It's such a joy to have everybody take part in some way in these services. And we really do thank you, Orton, for all your efforts and energies. As we come to look at the Word of God, shall we pray? Come on. Lord, we submit ourselves to you again. Lord, we know that you're calling us to be more than we can possibly ever dare to imagine. And therefore we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit you may reveal it to us. Let the work of Christ do its full work in us and bring us to freedom in him. We pray these things through the one who has gained us freedom, Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, as you know, we're coming into the heat of summer or late spring. It certainly feels like summer to me. Uh, and one of the things I remember as a child living in Auckland and then uh, seeing here uh, when, when coming back are swan plants. I don't know if you've, um, uh, you've got any swan plants in your garden. I think they're a wonderful thing except when they flower and they just send seeds everywhere. There's bananas, really. But the thing I love about swan plants is the insect that they attract. They attract a monarch butterfly who comes and lays an egg and then this caterpillar destroys the plant uh, this earthbound caterpillar uh, 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 eats the plant and then creates this chrysalis. And there's this moment of tension as you see this chrysalis move from green to different colors. And then there's this gold ring around it. It's fantastic. Only God, I think, could do something like that, don't you? And, and the great thing about it is that we know, we know that out of that chrysalis will come another monarch butterfly. You see, a, a, a caterpillar is a creature in potential for transformation. And so it is with us. God has called us not to be bound by this earth, but to be set free like a monarch butterfly, stretching its wings and off it goes. This is our seventh week in the book of Galatians, and we're bringing it into a land, really, by looking at the sixth chapter and the title of the series is Living in Freedom. And last week, 
we looked at chapter 5 and the concept of keeping in step with the Spirit. Paul said early in the letter, since you started and were accepted by the Lord and since you started in the Spirit, why are you trying to complete your faith in the flesh? And so we learned that we need to conform ourselves to Jesus and not the demands of others. And so we must learn to keep in step with the Spirit and wherever the Spirit is leading. And the key is this, that the Spirit leads us beyond ourselves into his resources. And so in doing so, we, we realize that the Holy Spirit dwelling within us enables us to stand firm and ready for action and also to continue to express our freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. And as Paul said at the beginning of chapter 5, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. And so the Spirit enables to witness to us that we can be free from those exterior pressures to conform and also free from the interior desire, internal desire, to hunger for those things that are simply not right. And we do this, we learnt, by exercising our faith in Jesus. It is all about Jesus. And so we, by exercising our faith, we realise that there becomes a new eagerness within us to please the Lord. We also realise and experience that, that that indwelling of the Spirit is incredibly powerful to, set, to continue to set us free. And that also, that faith that we exercise, of course it leads us to action upon this earth. And then we allow the, the grace of God to flow through our lives through faith. We find that actually we will then be uh, firmly grafted into the tree of life. Uh, and as the end of Galatians 5 says, life in the spirit means actually bearing the fruit of the tree of life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And so... We find that actually if we remain in the Lord and if we remain in the Spirit, we will bear fruit. And so we conclude our series today on Galatians chapter 6. And, and interestingly, up to this point in Galatians, Paul has been defending and, and on the offensive against the, the, the Judaizers who are wanting to, to bring these, these Gentile Christians into a form of Christianity that they were never meant to and never destined for. Uh, and, and as you know, it's all about law and about circumcision. But actually, Paul is trying to say to them, do you know, you, you're meant to enjoy the freedom that Christ has, has won for you. And so the, the central message of the entire book of Galatians is freedom uh, as opposed to the law. And we're called to live in freedom. And I wonder how you're doing with that. So, Paul, in this last bit of Galatians, is now trying to teach us and the Galatians what, what we are to do with the freedom that we have. What, what does that do for us? Because we're free now from the constraints of I have to or I really ought to do that. And if you're living in that place as a Christian, I want to, I want to challenge you that actually the, the Christian faith is not about have to's and it's not about ought to's. Because when the Spirit dwells within you, a new motivation occurs. And actually, there is something in me, I don't know about you, but there's something in me that rises up when I am expected to do something because of either my role or, or because that's what a Christian should do. This is the fruit of legalism. And this fruit I find particularly bitter and hard to swallow. And many people live their Christian life from a sense of duty and obligation and also they put that obligation on others as well. And let me tell you, this is not the freedom that Jesus has fought for you and won for you. We are called to enjoy our freedom and to allow the joy of the Lord to be our strength. And this comes from within. We have been set free to join in the movement of Jesus. And when we, when we truly comprehend that, the have-tos and the ought-tos disappear. And, and all of a sudden we realize we've been included 
into the most magnificent work of the kingdom. We've been invited in to take part in what Jesus is already doing. We have an opportunity to say, do you know, I want to do that. And, and uh, I pray that the Spirit will free you to seek the desires of the Lord and may they be upon your heart. So, in this last chapter, we want to look at what this freedom in Christ enables us to do. Now remember this, we can do nothing in our own strength. The, the pathway to burnout is striving. And we need to remind ourselves that we are not the saviour and the future history of the world does not depend upon us. We are merely agents of the one on whom the future of the world does depend, and that's Jesus. We have been saved. We are not the saviour. There is nothing that we can do to add or subtract from the saving work of Jesus. When Jesus died upon the cross, he said, it is finished. Everything has been completed. And therefore, all we can do, and this is the key to the Christian life, is to surrender to him and say, your will be done. Therefore, the reality of the one, uh, sorry, the reality is one of perspective and direction. As in Philippians 4, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's all about what Jesus is doing through us. And some of us may serve from a place of trying to be accepted, where actually we need to learn we're already accepted. Everything that matters has already been done by Jesus. We just need to walk in it. This is what Paul is explaining through chapter 6. Freedom in Christ is experienced through the Spirit. And this is why we need more of the Holy Spirit. Because then that re-emphasizes and reaffirms our freedom. This freedom enables us, therefore, to live an expansive life, a generous life, a life from the abundance that there is in, the Christ, in Christ Jesus. Because as Paul said, uh, in him we live and move and have our being. Oh, I think it was Peter, actually. Therefore, our freedom is not something that we enjoy quietly. We enjoy it abundantly and we express it outrageously. So what does this freedom uh, life look like? And we're going to just have a quick look through Galatians chapter 6. I, I promise you, we'll try and do this quite quickly. First of all, this the freedom in Christ enables us to support others. Ch uh, verses 1 and 2. Uh, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin... You who are spiritual should restore them gently, but watch yourselves, or you may also be tempted. There's a clear lesson. And then he says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Do you know, when you are in Jesus, we are called to take our eyes off ourselves and to set them firmly upon him. Many people in this world, many Christians, live in survival mode. You know, I remember paintballing a number of years ago with some uh, men from the church in my previous parish. And it was a fantastic experience and terrifying all at the same time because I was trying to survive and not get shot. Adrenaline was pumping through my body and I was exhausted uh, um, just living on the edge of survival. And let me tell you, friends, many people live like that all the time. Some as Christians and many as non-Christians. You know, it, it, it manifests itself by becoming defensive and grasping, just trying to get through life and let others take the second place. But when we realize that we have been set free, and we've been saved, and we start to walk in it, we realize that we don't have to live the old way. We, we're no longer under the oppression of the law and the ought-tos and have-tos. Our burden has gone, and so therefore we have the capacity to carry one another's burdens, to share one another's lives. 
Now, of course, the context is to help those struggling with sin. And we all struggle with sin, friends. And the call is for us to, to help one another. Therefore, in the same way that Jesus carried our burdens upon the cross so as to free us from our own burdens, so we have the capacity to help others in their burdens. And, and Paul says this, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Jesus was asked, and we need to find out what this law is, but Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment is. And he said, love God with everything you've got, love your neighbors as yourselves, and in the, at, at, with the same interest that you have for yourself. In John 13, he says, a new command or a new law I give to you, love one another as I have loved you. You know, it's not the law of the jungle anymore. It's not every person for himself. The law of the kingdom is to love God with everything you've got and love every, everybody else. And, the same, and what we will do, that is the law of Christ. And in carrying one another's burdens, we fulfill that law. We live it out. We bring it to completion upon this earth. And in doing so, we embody what it means to live freely from the tree of life. And we bring life to others, don't we? Freedom in Christ also enables us to live without comparison. Let's look at verse 4 and 5. Each one should test their own actions. They can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Do you know, you can take pride in your relationship in God. Understand that you are the apple of God's eye. You are deeply loved. Despite your flaws, you are loved. And often we are loved despite our flaws. We rise above our flaws, don't we? Many people want to be like other people or want what others have or try to prevent others from getting what they have. But when we realize that we are loved, we won't look around. Jealousy and comparison are powerful and destructive forces and take life from us. They take others down and also damage us in the process. Shakespeare said this, Jealousy is the green-eyed monster that mocks the meat it feeds on. So we need to live free of comparison. But then Paul says this strange thing. He said, for each one should carry their own load. But hold on, didn't Paul just say in the previous verse that we should carry one another's burdens? Now he's saying we should carry our own load. Now, we should be keen to help others and Jesus said for us to walk the extra mile, to, to give and not count the cost. But at the same time, we take the responsibility for our own stuff. So we carry one another's loads, but we don't dump our load on other people. Free people take responsibility for their own walk, and they also offer help for others to walk as well. So we live without comparison. You know, comparison has, uh, over the years, really hindered my walk with the Lord. But now I'm determined in Christ Jesus to know that I'm loved and, and accepted. And just to walk with a sense of integrity about that. Thirdly, freedom in Christ enables us to sow good seed. Verse 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A person reaps what they sow. Whoever, reaps, whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Now Paul could be using Jesus' parable of the sower, but also this is a very simple agricultural truth. If you plant weeds, you get weeds. If you plant plants for food, guess what? You get food. It depends on what you plant and how you tend it. Well, there's a story of an old Native American Cherokee teaching his grandson about life. And the grandson said to the grandfather, 
A fight is going on inside me. Grandfather said, it's a terrible fight and it's between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, superiority, and ego. My goodness me. But then he continued, but the other wolf is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you as is going on inside every other person. The grandson thought about this for a minute and then asked his grandfather, Grandfather, which wolf will win? And the grandfather said, The one that you feed. And that's so true, isn't it? Paul has been saying through this letter, you are free so to not have to feed the bad, bad wolf, which is the sinful nature. Aim to sow the seeds of the kingdom wherever you go. You are free from the fear of rejection because you've been accepted. The greatest investment that you could make is sowing seeds in other people's lives. Freedom in Christ enables us to sow good seed, but also freedom in Christ it enables us to have patience to expect a harvest. Verse 9, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You know, when I arrived in my first parish, I decided to plant a vegetable garden. We had a huge garden and there was this great patch there. So it was my first time at vegetable gardening and I learned that the best way to actually start a vegetable patch is to start to grow potatoes. So I dug the whole thing over because in growing potatoes you have to really dig the soil through. And then what I did is I planted potatoes and the next week I went out and I couldn't see anything and the week after I went out and I couldn't see anything and so I went home, uh, well I went back into the kitchen and I, I proclaimed to Sarah that we had a failed crop. Well, Sarah very kindly and graciously pointed me to the fact that things take time to grow. And actually 10 weeks later, and a little bit more than that, uh, we harvested potatoes. If we don't give up, we will reap a harvest. Now what does the harvest of those free in Christ look like? Well, I think there are two. First of all this, the harvest of personal righteousness. Philippians 1 says this, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. There is a fruit of righteousness. James 3, but wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, partial, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Uh, Hebrews 12, the writer goes on to say that God disciplines those um, whom he loves. And he says, no discipline is present at the, at, pleasant at the time, but painful. But later on, what does it do? It produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. And 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says this, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be enriched in every way so you can be generous on every occasion and through your generosity will result in great thanksgiving to God. In other words, the indwelling of the Spirit will bring us a harvest of righteousness if we are patient. Secondly, the other harvest, the great biblical theme here, is the harvest of souls that come to Christ. Uh, Matthew 9 and 10, Jesus said, the harvest is, the, Look, the fields are white unto harvest, so go. Uh, and there, there is a, we can expect not only a harvest of personal righteousness, but we can expect in the Spirit as free people to be able to proclaim the freedom for other people and see souls come to Christ. There is nothing more attractive to a prisoner than the concept of seeing someone who was free. And you 
are a living symbol of that freedom. Freedom in Christ also enables us to serve freely without the sense of compulsion. Verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. The priority of those outside of the kingdom is to look after ourself first. But the priority of free sons and daughters of God, full inherited people, is to see to the needs of the spiritual household first. And I want to thank you for your generosity and your forbearance and your prayers. We're called to care for one another. And as we do so, so we will be cared for. What goes around comes around in the kingdom. Freedom is about expressing God's capacity, which is far larger than our capacity. And so we serve from the generosity that God gives to us. Freedom in Christ also enables us to boast about the right things. Verse 14, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. The, Israel, uh, the Israelites and the Judaizers boasted in their ability to keep the law, shown by their external obedience uh, to the law through physical circumcision. And Paul, however, claims in Philippians that he was faultless in regard to the matters of the law, but still failed to meet the standards that God had for him. We are children of the free. We can be proud of our heritage. 2 Corinthians 10 says this, that those who boast, boast in the Lord. We realize it is by grace we have been saved and set free. And so we lose the need to boast about ourselves, our own achievements and abilities. And we boast in that which the Lord has done for us. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. We boast in him and him in her alone, in Christ alone. Seventh, freedom in Christ enables us to be fully ourselves. Verse 15, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. The new creation is you in Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is a Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. You are part of the future. You are a signpost of hope. You are a new creation. The old is gone. The new is here. You are completely different. You might not feel like it, but you are completely different. You are something new upon this earth. Therefore, as you step into your freedom, you're becoming all you were made to be. And then finally, friends, where freedom in Christ enables us to live from the place of grace. Verse 18, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Free people live enjoying and celebrating the unconditional love of Jesus for them and for others. It is by grace you have been saved and it is by grace that you live. Grace is about favor, but grace is also about not being treated as you deserve and not treating others as they deserve as well. Just as we saw at the beginning of the series, God the Father has invited you to live a life of freedom. He is inviting you to become part of his family. Will you walk in it? He's inviting you to work from his inexhaustible resources. And therefore, we can carry one another's burdens and we can live in freedom. So just like a monarch butterfly, you are destined for far more than just sitting on a leaf. You're destined for transformation, to live in the fullness of your freedom. You are free to live in Jesus and to live for Jesus. And through this, you'll be free from the expectation that others have and you'll be able to live in the potential that God has already placed within you. Let's pray. Father, we want to live in everything that you have for us. And we choose to believe, Lord, that we are a new creation. The old is gone. 
the new has come. Help us, Lord, to walk in this freedom, Lord, to carry one another's burdens and, to, and also to, to be responsible for our own walk. Father, we pray, Lord, that we will be able to sow seeds of righteousness, that, that Lord, our lives will be right before you, and that, Lord, also that we would see a harvest of those souls that we have been sowing into. Father, help us, Lord, we pray, to express our freedom in such a way that stops us comparing ourselves to other people. Lord, we pray that, Lord, that we may live from the, the place of grace, Lord, we may be fully ourselves and we may be free to serve you from the generosity and the capacity, Lord, that you give us in your spirit. And we love you. What we need is more of you. So we say, come, Holy Spirit. We surrender to you, to the work of transformation, that we may be truly free. In Jesus' mighty and freeing name we pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you, friends. Let's live it, hey? Let's get on with the rest of our service.